This is my New Year's resolution. I'll stop acting like a tomboy and be sweet. Christy McNichol was an all-American tomboy, an Emmy winner before she could even drive a car, and then after a solid streak on Empty Nest, this little darling of television left it all behind. So why did Christy McNichol leave Hollywood in the dust? And what did a mother's failed dreams have to do with it? Finally, what is Christy doing today to keep the arts alive? Welcome, I am your host Nostalgic Nick with all these answers and more, including how her TV success ended up driving her away, and the shocking answers a doctor finally gave this girl who matured way too fast. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up to show your support, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss one of our deep dives. But now without further ado, let's reunite the family. What show was Christy McNichol on as a child? Christy had a foot in the door in Hollywood, just not the way people usually do. Her mother worked a bunch of odd jobs, from a secretary to a makeup salesperson. And she was also a movie extra, an ongoing gig Christy feels shaped a lot of her own life for better and for worse. Once, her mom landed a background job in the movie Bigfoot. And Christy's brother, Jimmy, loved monsters, so mom brought the kids to set. But there was almost a very near miss. Jimmy loved the set, but Christy was terrified and stayed in the car. But not before the crew still saw the two kids and told mom, hey, they would be perfect for commercials. So mom asked the kids what they thought, and of course they were excited because, hey, I'm gonna be a TV star. So began her stay in the limelight, and Christy got to transition from TV ads to TV shows. Oh, hi. Ooh, what a mess. Yeah. What a mess. And so it was securing the role of buddy and family that secured Christie's place as a household name. She was around 14 when she started and hit the ground running with three Emmy nominations in a row, winning two. But Christie would prove herself more of an adult than most people around her. Precocious is the word reporters use to describe Christie, even as a kid. And it's pretty accurate. According to her, she'd tell her own mother, quote, you're the child. And her mom's response was, yeah, you're the mother. Christy would clean the house and ask her mom what time she would be home. And so it was the same when she joined family. She said, quote, I was like a miniature adult. I'd go off to work every day with a little briefcase. I really think I grew up backwards. There is the way most kids do it. And then there is the way Chris did it. How old was Christy McNichol when she did Little Darlings? Christy would rack up almost 100 episodes of Family, but that wasn't the only gig she took at the time. As she tells it, that's partly because of her complicated relationship with her mother, saying, quote, I didn't know the word no, because I wanted to please everybody all the time. So anytime there was a lull, Christy got handed a new role, and of course she took it. Christy recalled an exhausting schedule, saying, quote, before I could even say yes or no, I'd be on my way to a location, and then I'd come back and jump right into family again. I mean, I had no life. And so, family wrapped up in 1980, and that same year, Christy, at barely 18 years old, dove into another huge project. Little darlings. It took a toll on Christy, but on the outside, nobody saw anything but a perfectly composed young woman. Like seriously, perfectly composed, maybe too much. Then she began maturing in reverse, beginning with food fights and trying to capture some of that innocence of youth at 18. She said, quote, it was like I wanted to live my childhood, finally. What happened to Christy and Jimmy McNichol? The show family put Christy on the map and she kept her days full staying in the cultural psyche of America but not just through TV and film, but also music. Christy appeared in the TV special, The Carpenters at Christmas, performing well, singing alongside Karen Carpenter, whose tragic but incredible story we've also covered. A year later, Christy and her brother Jimmy had an eponymous record on the shelves. Then Christy reunited with The Carpenters, this time with her brother for The Carpenters, A Christmas Portrait. And the siblings cover of the 1963 hit, He's So Fine, reached number 70 on the Billboard Hot 100. He's so fine. 
So all this helped make Christy one of the more well-rounded teen stars of the age, and also one of the more stressed. But the bond she formed with her brother would be invaluable, not just for building her success, but when Christy needed time to rest after a big emotional breakdown. It was Jimmy who dropped everything, moved in, and helped her every single day. Why did Christy McNichol quit acting? The late 70s and early 80s were a crazy busy time for Christy. She juggled eight movies in six years. The last of this back-to-back -back bunch was Just The Way You Are, where she had a starring role as a musician who has to wear a leg brace. The filming was to take place in Paris, and as the trip approached, Christy's thoughts grew wilder and wilder. Her nerves hit very hard and affected her eating and sleeping. So she did what any young actor with worries about the future would do. She approached her manager. Christy told him all the worries keeping her on edge and how her gut was telling her to not do this film. And this moment of trust and vulnerability was met with this quote. Don't worry, we'll get through it. Christy would look back on that and remember how she reached out for help, reached out to be listened to, and no one really did. Even at the time she felt stranded, she remembered, quote, I was so confused, I was so depressed, I was so full of anxiety, I was a wreck, and there I was filming a movie. Dragged off to France, Christy's weight dropped to 96 pounds. She couldn't sleep a wink, and when she did, she had strange, horrible dreams. In her waking hours, she shook like a leaf, constantly felt on the brink of an anxiety attack, and she couldn't stop from crying. In private, on set, everywhere. Christy reached her limit just in time for a filming break for the holidays. She beelined it back to California and reached out to a friend. Finally, someone listened to her and took Christy to a doctor specializing in adolescents with emotional problems. He said she had a lot of anger in her, rage she didn't know the words for, boiling under the surface after her weird, disarrayed childhood she had. But hearing that doctor put everything into perspective. Finally, Christy McNichol felt seen and heard. The good doctor told Christy she shouldn't finish the film and for the first time in her entire career. Christy put the brakes on a project, but she wasn't out of the woods just yet. In the year-long break she took before finishing Just The Way You Are, well, Hollywood got to work, and the rumor mill worked overtime, painting her as a drug addict, an alcoholic, or a manic depressive. I mean, the studio kept saying she was dealing with a quote, chemical imbalance. So yeah, they just lit a match and threw it into gasoline. Christy knew the truth, but that didn't make the gossip any less hurtful. And she'd say of that time, quote, I think it would be easier to kick that kind of habit than go through the years of hell that I have. Don't you see? If you help me with this, I can be like a lot of other people there. Well, she still had hell to go through. Christy jumped back into acting, and after that stint, found it hard to land work. And when she did, the latter half of her career was made up of lackluster productions with limited staying power. Then in 1988, she found herself in a spin-off of the legendary Golden Girls called Empty Nest. She had a steady presence in the show, amassing another hundred episodes. But her mental health was still fragile and Christy was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. The whole situation just wasn't sustainable. The unending hustle stole Christie's childhood and it kept her from claiming any peace of mind to make up for it. Finally, she had to step away for good. Years later, she would lay it all out, saying, quote, I was on the big stage between ages 8 and 30. I left show business for a variety of reasons, but a big one was my interest in learning what else there was in life. What does Christy McNichol do today? So that was it for Christy McNichol, who left the limelight for good. Gossip was ready to spread like wildfire, and when Christy addressed everything, it was while still staying away from Hollywood. In 2001, her publicist, who shared a statement on her behalf, said, quote, I retired from my career after 24 years. My feeling was that it was time to play my biggest part, myself. 
When Christy did emerge from her quiet life, it was to help others from a distance. In 2012, she came out as gay to help other people who felt unsure about themselves. Other than that, her new life is as opposite to her old one as it gets. Instead of her mom being her flighty manager enabling Christy's yes man mindset, Christy is now her own master and the only thing she's letting into her life is what she finds calming. Things like yoga, tennis, and cuddling with her dogs. When she does let Hollywood in, it's on her own terms and for a good cause. She sang for the Los Angeles Valley College Choir and got involved in a local foundation to support the music program. The way she sees it, music is a haven that needs protecting. It meant stability for her and it is stability for so many others. It's not the fanfare of being a teen idol, but today at 61, Christy wouldn't have it any other way, saying, quote, This phase of my life is so good. My home life is happy and serene. A lot of her other time is spent with her brother Jimmy, the one family member who always did his job and helped out his sister when she needed it most. After such a turbulent experience with Hollywood, will Christy ever act again? She said in 2015, quote, never say never. Christy McNichol, her career was lightning in a bottle. A story of a talented star rising to the top like she deserved, but it did cost her a normal childhood. The impact was like a lidded pot finally boiling over. And to this day, it is a lesson on how important mental health is, especially when everything seems like a dream come true. So what do you think? What is your favorite role of Christy McNichols? Have you ever heard any of her music? Who out there remembers those Carpenter's holiday specials? Please get in the comments and tell us all things Christy McNichol. If you enjoyed our deep dive today, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss one of our videos. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.